We're looking at all of Photon Hypernova. Is this set really worth it? Hey, what's going on, guys? Today we're talking about a special edition of a market watch. We're just going to look at all of Photon Hypernova. I referenced in my last video the Yu Gi Oh! Penny Stock market watch that I was going to talk about Photon Hypernova. Uh, I will still be talking about Photon Hypernova on the next Penny Stock Market Watch. But I really wanted to just do a deep dive into Photon Hypernova. Take a look at the best selling cards and products. Uh, there's not a lot of products, obviously, because it's just the box. Uh, but the best selling cards from Photon Hypernova. If it's a Penny Stock, I'm not going to dive too deep into it because obviously... Like I said, I'm going to be talking about Photon Hypernova on the Penny Stock Market Watch next week. If you guys don't know what that is, $5 or less uh, essentially is the Penny Stock. It used to be a dollar or less, like actual pennies. But what costs less than a dollar, you know? Like 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 bread is like $2, eggs is $4. Nothing costs a dollar anymore. Everything's more expensive. So $5 or less is a Penny Stock essentially. We'll be talking about Photon Hypernova's Penny Stocks next week. Um, it, it will probably touch on some of them. Like I really like this card. Uh, Plunder Patrol, this is probably a really solid buy. It's the number four best-selling card. Uh, I don't know how many you need. Sneaky C, I don't even know. Your opponent special summons a month. I think I do know, but I just... Special summons card in phase on defense position if you do during the end phase. Change it to face up. If this card is flipped face up, destroy all special summon monsters on the field. So this isn't terrible. Um, your opponent can get rid of it, but it's kind of awkward. It's kind of awkward. It's not... I mean, you can omni-negate it. With like Borolo Salvage Dragon, for example, or like Apoloza, because it's an effect. So Apoloza can be used on your own cards. Most most Omni effects can. Um, so it's good. It's not great, but you know they're not gonna give us Max C, so they gotta give us something, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, these are the best selling cards out of Photon Hypernova, and this is interesting. This this archetype. And we'll do a top 10 list at some point. I kind of want to have the format breathe a little bit so we can get an idea. Uh, but this might be a top 5 archetype uh, in, in, in the entire game, right? We just And we look at Labyrinth. Okay, I don't ever know if it'll really be the best archetype because it's a trap-based deck. And no offense to anybody if you take offense to this. Uh, I'm sorry if you take offense to this. Trap decks are harder to play because you usually have to activate your traps at the right time. You can't just go willy-nilly, right? Like, if you're trying to play, a, like, a really good Tier 1 meta deck, you're just trying to be a sheep, you could, lear like, learn a couple of really good combos and just be good there, right? And I know, to an extent, every deck works with Omni Negations, but a lot of times you just make, like, five or six Omni Negations or five or six forms of disruption, and you just go, negate. Negate, 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 and you don't really think about it. Like I said, I might not be talking about you, or maybe I may have struck a nerve. If I did, I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend. I just know that it does take a certain type of individual to play a control-based deck, and that's what Labyrinth is. And that's why we don't usually see, because usually Yu-Gi-Oh! players like aggro combo-based decks, because that's what Yu-Gi-Oh! is. Right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong. I'm a, I, I prefer combo aggro based decks right uh and and i know at the highest end of, of the game which is probably where we're going to see labyrinth the most people do understand when to activate different spells and traps and things like that right so with that being said i don't know if this is really a great buy because i just i just i don't know if if a deck like labyrinth it was like eldritch right it didn't really have like appeal to the masses Right? There's just like a certain group of people who really love control-based decks. They're the ones who are going to play this deck. That's just how I feel. I feel like most meta people will be playing Cash Tira, right? But it is possible, right? And we do see this card creeping down and down and down and down and down. Um, I wouldn't get it above $10. I would wait for it to go under $10. Um, see if I can get it under $10 because as you can see, uh, the first page, second page is already $12, $13. We're moving on to $14 and so on and so forth. Um, I feel like it could still go down though. So just wait. If you can get it for under $10, I think it's a steal, but I would just wait. 
You know, you, the, you don't have to buy immediately. You don't have to sell immediately. Just hold, right? Don't be upset if you pull it. It's not a terrible pull. Uh, 12 bucks isn't terrible, but um, it's also not the best thing. What is the best thing? Let's do... Let me see if we can do this. Let's do this real quick. So, let's just do a quick tutorial. So, what I'm about to do here, uh, I'm just going to look at the best selling super high-end cards from Photon Hypernova. Uh, and the way to do that, you have to click on sets here. It's in alphabetical order, which you would think would make it easier to find, but there's just, there's two different photons. Like, there's so many sets in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and let's do a hundred dollars, because like I said, we're doing the chase cards, right? And obviously we have to switch it from less than to greater than, right? So... The Starlights. I don't know why there's no image. Tri Brigade Arms. This is the new uh, Link Monster, right? Yes. This. Hmm. Because it's in order of high to low. So let's switch it up a little bit. Let's get back to best selling. Um, UJ. So the Tri Brigade Arms is the worst selling one, which is interesting. Um, I feel like Tri Brigade, mm, the reason for that could be. Because Tri Brigade has snuck its way into budget territory. Um, so maybe that's why more people are just getting the um, regular version from Photon Hypernova. Because um, if we look at the regular version, it's a dollar. So I think, is it a common too? Oh, it's a super rare, yeah. So there's really no incentive to get this version at max rarity. Max rarity tri brigade. Uh, like, I guess, you know, if that's if that's what you're into, you, you do you. Um I'm just having a tough time. Like some of the cards I obviously recognize was that one, right? Yeah, Captain Carey. So this is two dollars. Uh, it does appear like it's just coinciding with what is Gold Pride? It's a trap deck. If this card is essentially you can target with Gold Pride monster you control. That was special one for the extra deck. Banish up to three gold cards from your graveyard and do gets five hundred attack. No. Uh, <laughs> it we're really realistically. If you're looking for the best Starlight Rares from here, it's these top three. But this one's interesting. Um, this one's interesting. This card's here. This one you can send. A lot of people really like Branded this format. Uh, you know, because it did get some support from Photon Hypernova. And it, it really just got some support by Tier Elements getting hit disappearing and now it's kind of it can kind of slowly make its way back because there's bis bis aren't everywhere right um so i mean this version is only ten dollars it's like not even it's like nine dollars i don't really love i don't really love this as the, the starlight chase rare i think these two are actually just the best two cash tira uh our eyes heart the starlight rare version um We'll take a look uh, once again, obviously. Um, this is the wrong one. <laughs> we'll take a look, obviously, at the regular Rise Heart. Um, and then we'll look at the... Um, and see, that's what I'm talking about. So, like I said, they were all kind of coinciding. Where it was like... Of the five Starlight Rares. Their other rarity from Photon Hypernova. This was the cheapest... This was the next cheapest. This was the next cheapest. And then it was this. Right? Because obviously Mirror Jade um, is not... Mirror Jade is not in um, Photon Hypernova. It's in the Structure Deck. Right? And it's in at about 50 cents, which is insane. Right? But it, because it was from the Structure Deck, that's still on shelves right now. Um, I think that's why so many people... And I also think, too, like... I mean, we don't have the image for it, 
But I would assume that these are the best looking <laughs> Starlight Rares. Because that's the thing, too. Like, if you're going to spend an extra $100, $200 on a card purely for cosmetic reasons, it better look cool, right? Um, so, these two are easily my picks for the best two Starlight Rares. Now, which one do I like better between the two of them? Um, I mean, there's four... There's four pages here, 35 listings. It's kind of a lot. Uh, this one has three, uh, 24 listings, so less listings. It starts at 321, and this one... You know, you have to get to the second page before you get to that. Um, but it's not just which one's more expensive. It's which one's a better buy, right? And I could definitely see this card being more likely to be sold, if that makes sense. Because there are some people who do like to just splurge and go crazy. So you could see a situation where, okay, I bought this for $300. Bucks. Um, i am going to go over here, sell it for... I got to go page over i'm gonna go over here sell it for 400 bucks and list it for 400 bucks and just wait now i do recommend um keeping this in mind that if you sell anything for over 50 dollars on tcg player you have to include shipping um like the tracking number and different things like that um a lot of times though you could just have shipping be included uh, you're gonna make the money anyway uh, but as far as mirror jade is concerned you can't get one for that cheap and i know three hundred dollars isn't cheap but you you know you can get one for 300 bucks easy you can easily get one for 300 bucks flip it for 400 bucks uh when it eventually gets to that spot i i, I, could, I could see this very easily creeping up there um as far as mirror jade is concerned could you just say well let me just do this i i get it for 350 sell it for five and that's where I think Mirror Jade could end up being in a sweet spot. But my only concern with Mirror Jade versus um, the Kashtira Xyz boss monster is that it's just a better card in general. right? And since it's a better card, that means better players will be playing the deck. And usually the better the player, like the pro players, they are willing to buy the Starlight Rares. I just I don't know how many people are going to be willing to buy the Mirror Jade starlight rare i just think it was the shortest printed it's kind of it's, it's kind of what it looks like it was just the shortest printed starlight rare out of the group which is fine uh but definitely the cash tier arise heart is probably the one i would look at if i had just an extra 300 dollars just to go crazy with it but like i said if you can get mirror jade ice split if you can get mirror jade for 300 right that's the difference like if you can get cash tier arise heart for 300 versus mirror jade for 300 you go with the mirror jade because you can flip mirror jade for more right but if you can get mirror jade for 350 versus cash tier 300 go up to 400 go up to 450 i feel like you're more likely to make the profit off of cash tier rise heart if that makes sense because i just think more people are going to be willing to buy it but we'll just have to wait and see on all of that okay so let's cut this out and go back to best selling another thing worth noting uh, like none of the starlight like how far back do we have to go to find a starlight rare so this is page two and like i said I, I i've mentioned this before i don't know when i said best selling i don't know if it's purely based off of numbers like this sold 14 copies today or 14 copies this week um or if it's based off revenue like this made a 400 bucks this week or a thousand bucks this week i don't know how they do it on tcg player but like we're on page two. Now we're on page three. Just looking for a starlight rare. I mean, like, we just crossed the pack. Uh, maybe there's just not. <laughs> maybe there's just not any. Maybe, maybe none have sold. It's kind of what the vibe is that none have sold. I don't know. So just always be careful when you're spending that much money, uh, trying to make that much money. Um, because it's one thing to buy a card for 40, sell it for 50. It's another thing to buy a card for 400 and attempts of selling it for 500. 
Um, interesting. I do kind of want to look at this archetype. <laughs> How many... Cold Pride, Carry Captain. Ooh, is it budget? <gasps> oh, don't tempt me with a good dime. If your life points are lower... Oh, does it have Dynamorphia Synergy? Does any let me someone let me know in the comments down below. I remember this card. Does does this archetype work with Dynamorphias? Uh, if your life points are lower than your opponent, you can special up this card from your hand. If this card is normal special summon, you can target a non-warrior gold pride monster from your graveyard, special summon in defense position. Also, you can have special summon from the extra deck. Ooh. Probably doesn't work with Dynamorphia then. <laughs> uh, but during your main phase, immediately uh you can during your opponent's main phase, excuse me. You can immediately synchro summon a synchro monster. Okay. 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 I don't hate it. Right? Um, during the main phase, you can target one phase up monster. Your opponent controls this card. Gains attack equal to that target's original attack. Then if your life points are lower, destroy it. Okay. Once returned during the end phase, the previous effect, if the previous effect was activated, return this card to the extra deck and special summon. Interesting. Interesting. Um. Hmm. Uh, we got the crowd goes. I'm not going to read all of them, but I'm just kind of looking at what appears to, so I can get a gist of the idea of the deck, what appears to be the best cards from the deck. Reveal one gold pirate card from your hand. Monster from your hand, add a gold pipe monster with a different name for your deck to your hand, and you can apply the following effect. Special summon a gold pipe monster from your hand, but lose life points equal to its deck. That's is that a plus two? No, it's a plus one. Still really good though. Yeah, this This seems solid. Um this these are these are always interesting because uh, we we talk about the pearly cards a lot. I've been talking a lot about like rescue ace, a bunch of different archetypes like that. Um, and when it comes to these archetypes, you gotta play the, the game, the risky game, right? I'll give you War Rock Sun Avalon. War Rock and Sun Avalon. When we look at War Rock, when War Rock first came out, uh, Blazing Vortex. Okay, what are we doing? The best Karibo cards? No way. Okay, when we look at Blazing Vortex, right? Spring Ants was also in this. Uh, Ojama Pink. <laughs> Let's just do this. I don't know why I even did. I kept it best on. Uh, oh, Trishula Starlight Rare. That's something. That's something people would be willing to buy. Uh, but anyway, sorry I got distracted. I'm trying to see if there's a good Evil Twins. That's a great example. Um, that's another great example of what I'm talking about here. Where Evil Twin, uh, Sun Avalon, um, when we first saw the archetype, we're like, okay, it could make some headways. It could make some noise. Uh, man, this is not a good set. Uh, <laughs> the next wave of support comes out. Sun Avalon goes to the moon. Evil Twin and Sprite all of a sudden looks like a really solid archetype. War Rock's next wave comes out. It's not very good. Right? So, you got to play that game with this archetype. Because I look at Gold Pride out the gate. First off, you can get... Um, and there's a website. Oh my goodness, I forget the name of the website. Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't even know why I did that. So you could get if we could take a look at how many gold pride cards there are. If you can get the entire core, because there's Leon, there's two Leons, so there's one. Uh, Krog was wild, Captain Carey, Star Leon, 
Nitro Head, Nitro Blaster, start your engines. So seven. There's only six even. What is missing? Because Leon's here. Is the spell? There's the spell. The spell's missing. This has the spell, though. Okay. Three spell and uh, seven cards. Three of each. Yep. So you can get it for about 52 bucks on eBay. And, hey, you could have an interesting little deck um, that functions super strange, actually. Because not only is it doing the Christian thing or the, the Yang Zing thing where we are special summoned during our opponent's turn. It's got a lot of synergistic cards um, like the, like the uh, spell card, like, you know, Captain Carry, uh, even the Star Leon floating in. Uh, could be very interesting as well. You could get to a situation where this doesn't end up being very good, but you could also, for 52 bucks, get yourself a nice little deck core that could potentially get some support, right? And down the road, you go, yeah, I picked this deck up, but it was only 52 bucks, and now it's like 300 bucks, right? So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, it could go either way. I don't, I don't want to guarantee anything one way or the other, but I will say from its foundation. It doesn't seem too, too terrible. Um, but a lot of things have looked okay at first and then not ended up really doing all of that. Um, if we can go back far enough to Photon Hypernova. Um, then we're just looking at the cards high to low. Uh, the Giski stuff is interesting too. I think that Gishki's an archetype that I don't think, you know, was with obviously with Sprite uh, taking the hit. Gishki Sprites obviously took a hit inadvertently. This is only. This isn't that bad at all for what this card is. It's not terrible for 15 cents. Like I said, we'll be talking about penny stocks next week. Um, but yeah, like 20 cents for this card. It's one of the best selling cards out of Photon Hypernova. Like. You know, I always say this too. Like, there's nothing wrong with playing, like, a bad deck that you just enjoy playing, right? Um, that card felt interesting. That that looked interesting. There's a lot of penny stocks in here. And the chase cards aren't super terribly expensive. Uh, that's probably why the market is so flooded by, essentially, penny stocks. I mean, if we just actually just switch this over to market high to low. Yeah, like the, you know, you got triple tactics, thrust, pressure, planet, weight, soth, Castirios, uh the, the Labyrinth card that we talked about. This was the only card we really talked about because this is the only card that was really, uh, you know, up there as far as best selling was concerned. We know about Castirios stuff's going to be expensive. But I think Konami's assuming that just the cash tier stuff by itself is going to be enough to really push this set through. Uh, but I, I just don't think people are really paying, paying that price for it. Um, this is card. I did definitely want to talk about this card, though, obviously. Uh, other light matches you control gain 500 attack. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. You get detached material, either add or send it to the graveyard, uh, photon or galaxy card. This can send galaxy cyclone. Um, if a light monster is special summoned to your field, you can target one of those monsters becomes a level eight. So galaxy eyes, photon dragons, one of those archetypes, similar to dark magician, elemental heroes, um, that seems like it's a fan favorite. Uh, and it's basically still a penny stock, even though I don't think it will be very long. So this is actually really solid buy. Um, and yeah, photon hypernova, not really performing super well. I mean, we, we just, I don't even know how many Starlight Rares have been sold. There's no pictures on here yet. I know this set just came out, but I don't know. kind of feels kind of a little bit lackluster. We'll talk about it a little bit more, obviously, when we talk about the Penny Stocks. Um, I just wanted to look at this card super quick. Need a player can activate cards. Excuse me, what? So there's just a Necro Valley. I don't know if it's that good, though, because it's like, yeah, this is interesting. This is interesting because it's a stun card. Be on the lookout for this card. Neither player can activate effects, activate cards in the graveyard, banish cards, or special summon monsters. So it's literally just pick one of the effects of Necro Valley. That's interesting. 
Um, I don't hate this card. I don't love it either. But let me know what you guys think. What are the best cards from Photon Hypernova or anything? Let me know in those comments down below. What do you think? Do you think that Photon Hypernova is just taking a little bit to get going, but it's going to really end up being a great set? Or do you think maybe it's kind of a lackluster set? I don't know. I just wasn't super impressed by it. But I don't know. Maybe maybe I uh, the things will change as time does. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but let me know in those comments down below. Make sure you guys click that like button to show your support for the channel. Subscribe for even more content. But most importantly of all, have a good day.